folks. Um, so this session is about how cloud is helping democratize the use of a next generation of modern uh, enterprise apps like Freshdesk. Um, so we're going to share our perspective how that adoption is changing the game for companies not only in uh, mature markets, but also increasingly in emerging markets. And that, that has some real implications for entrepreneurs in the room, for product managers in the room who are looking to build your next uh, killer app for the enterprise space. We'll also take the opportunity to share with you some of the trends that we are seeing in the market, as Brian said, for customer service. So let me uh, start uh, quickly. Um, you know, there are a couple of phenomena that have transformed the world of customer support, and that is one, mobile and social. And let me ask you a question before I move forward. How many of you have ever tweeted, uh, done a Facebook post or a, or a WeChat message about customer service or a poor customer service um, that you experienced? And I see there are a few hands, and other than, others probably are a little shy. Um, and when you did that, when you had that tweet, um, it was a public conversation um, about uh, that brand. It wasn't one-to-one, -one, which is what we are used to with email and phone. That, that conversation is between a brand and, a, and, a, and its customer. But in that tweet, you had a public conversation, which affects the company's reputation in a very, very public manner. And it's that phenomenon that many companies now have to address and are challenged to address um, you know, throughout the life cycle. Not only big companies, but also smaller, smaller companies, you know, fast growth startups, in a way that is more holistic because you're looking at various interaction channels uh, with, the, with the customer and the brand. And in fact, I ran into one of our customers, Fetch's customers, uh, a, a great company named uh, Kobe out of Frankfurt, Germany. And they actually, it's a, it's a device, it's a, it's a connected device uh, out of Frankfurt they've built, and they actually launched the project on Kickstarter. And they raised $400,000, and the founder, I don't know if Andreas is in the room, was telling me that when they launched the project on Kickstarter, they were actually getting queries about the device um, from their supporters, backers, but also customers who wanted to make first orders um, you know, for, for this device. So here's an example, and they look to use Fresh Test to manage that interaction. This is an example of a company that before it even launched, it had to manage its uh, narrative about its service, about its product, using you know, a next-gen modern cloud app. And finally, let me say this. The users of this software, uh, many of you, who, if, if you're a customer support rep or, or a salesperson, you're spending a good part of your day um, working on this software. This is a new generation of users that have come on into the workforce. Many of them are digital natives. They are um, you know, often millennials. And they're used to uh, working on consumer out experiences. And, and as you know, a lot of the software still hasn't, uh, you know, in that, is not in that form factor. So the usability becomes a key factor as well. So with that, um, with the confluence of, this, of all these factors, Freshtest has taken it upon itself to have a very democratizing mission about solving the customer support software challenge. Um, so we, have, uh, we are serving companies, not just the big enterprises, but also a lot of SMBs around the world, as well as some fast growth startups. There are two products. Um, one is Freshdesk, which is meant for external customer support to help you manage customer support um, with your end customers. And Fresh Service, which is meant for internal support, IT support, but often is also used in, a, in an employee desk uh, scenario. You know, there are many um, folks here from around the world. Um, there are dozens of countries represented. And I want to just take a minute to share with you our journey. Uh, I think for those of you who are global entrepreneurs, this will resonate with you. So we were founded about five years ago, and um, in, not in the valley, not in Western Europe, but out of uh, Chennai, India. And the company has been a global phenomenon over the last five years. So, you know, if you have a, if you have a, if you have a good thought, um, an idea that you want to, um, you know, popularize and you want to solve a business need, you know, thanks to cloud and online acquisition today, now you can build a business uh, that can be pretty special. Um, so we've been very lucky to have a passionate team that has now grown to more than 500 employees worldwide. Um, obviously, San Francisco is our headquarters. We have a large team in India, Chennai, offices in London. We have some team members here from, from our London office and just opened an office in Sydney as well. Um, you know, and just to give you a sense of scale, you know, today Freshness is more than 50,000 customers globally. And we grew um, from about 5,000 three years ago to 50,000. That's, ten, that's tenfold increase over the last couple of years. And a lot of this is a reflection of this demand for support and some of the challenges that I shared with you um, earlier. 
Uh, we're obviously very gratified to have some great investors in Excel, Tiger, and, and Google Capital. So it, it's wonderful to have their advice as we scale the business. Let me spend a couple of minutes to talk about what are the trends we are seeing in the customer support and how it actually is relevant to the broader uh, uh, phenomena of, of the democratization of the enterprise cloud. Um, first and foremost, I think the customer support overall is becoming the new form of marketing. Because you're managing that interaction with your customers in a public medium, you have an opportunity to manage your brand with providing better support. So it is really the new marketing, if you will. And how it gets rendered, first and foremost, we see within, uh, in terms of its language, short form communication, real time interaction um, is becoming the key language of support. Customers are, um, they prefer uh, you know, tweets, they prefer uh, you know, messages, uh, text messaging, messaging, as opposed to long form communication of email and phone. While they still reign supreme, but live chat is arguably the faster, fastest growing channel for customer support. Number two, um, customers would rather talk amongst each other and troubleshoot than speak with companies. And, and unfortunately, sometimes companies have themselves to blame for that. And that, that creates an opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer support, um, as well as opportunity for us to use natural language processing to surface some of the data that is being communicated between, um, between companies and customers and route the call to a more appropriate agent. And actually, to that end, we have made an acquisition uh, just recently that will allow us to roll out smarter communities. So for example, if you have a, a fellow user in your neighborhood who has engaged with a brand and can, can help, uh, we may be able to surface them and they can assist you uh, for your query as opposed to you reaching out to the company directly. And finally, the in-app mobile support. You know, this is, I think, not a trend. It's frankly already happening. Uh, 2015 is actually the first year when uh, mobile will take um, over other forms of channel for support queries. Um, so in-app mobile support, the fact that you have to stay within, the, within your mobile app to be able to interact with a company, you don't have to leave that mobile app to have a video chat or to have a communication with a brand, that is becoming table stakes. And we obviously, as a company, as a leader in this space, are addressing uh, these, uh, these, these challenges by either acquisitions or through our, own road, through our own organic roadmap. While some of these trends are obviously global in nature, I have to say that you know, they're, uh, they're, um, they're, uh, they're more uh, prominent, if you will, in emerging markets. And I want to share a few examples with you in the next couple of slides uh, to illustrate the point. Um, just if you can bear with me on this data, this is freshest data and usage worldwide. Most of our businesses in developed markets in North America and Western Europe, roughly three-fourths of users who use Freshdesk are in North America and Western Europe. Only 17% are in emerging markets. However, however, uh, those 17% of users of Freshdesk in emerging markets, countries like India, China, Brazil, are responsible for one-third of the conversations uh, between uh, companies and their end customers. Which means that these are often uh, companies that are in consumer businesses, they're often mobile companies, and there's a very strong dynamic of interaction uh, and, and a sort of density of conversations in those uh, you know, consumer-driven economies. And I'll share with you some examples and what this means for you if you're an entrepreneur uh, in, in the B2B space, if you are a, a product manager in the B2B space, how to design your product that lends itself for usage and adoption in emerging markets as well as developed markets. So a couple of examples from, um, from, Braz from Brazil, which is one of the markets that we, we do very well. Uh, let me start with Grupo Boticaro. It's a cosmetics uh, brand. They operate 3,400 uh, franchises actually in Brazil through the length and breadth of the country. By the way, I read a very interesting stat, some of you may find this interesting, that Brazil is the world's second big biggest cosmetics market after Japan. While they're only 3% of the world's population, they use 13% of the world's deodorants. And it's, uh, I thought it was fascinating. And we obviously are playing our, our role in helping this company be successful. Um, they were managing their support using Microsoft Outlook, which you know, uh, wouldn't work. Um, and uh, so we have come in and we've helped them manage the support in a more centralized manner, and chat is an emerging channel for them, uh, a, a key form of communication. Again, a very short form factor of communication, given the fact they have a pretty large user base across Brazil. Pay11, it's a mobile payments company, sort of square of Brazil. Actually, it's done pretty well. Also, have launched products in UK and other markets, and um, they 
uh, rolled out the mobile in-app support. So the mobile payment app that uses that merchants use uh, to uh, um, uh, to process payments using Pay11. Now they can provide service through that within that app. Just within one quarter of launching that mobile in-app, that app is processing six percent of the customer conversations. Um, we have a pretty significant base in India. Obviously, it's a founding location as a, as a company as well. Go iBibo is a travel leader in the, in the Indian market. Uh, between mobile and social and community forum, Go iBibo's customers are engaging uh, with, with the company, and, and that's roughly one-fourth of the conversation. Again, very short form, very live, very interactive uh, media of communication as opposed to email and phone, and that just gives you a, a pretty good sense of how that kind of a new, uh, new class of companies engaging with its customers. Book My Show is the number one movie app of India. And you know, when folks go out to uh, watch a Bollywood flick, this is the app they engage with to figure out where, where, where to go and, and where, the, where, where, the, uh, where, where the venue for the movies is. And chat is a, is a key channel that that, that that consumer class engages on for, for, uh, with Book My Show. Um, finally, I'm going to end with um, a, a Chinese example. And this is a company that actually is a, is a leader in the, in the designer um, eyewear in China. They actually operate 30 different brands, and therefore they have 30 different support portals. Uh, chat is near their uh, peak volume for phone as well. And the team is distributed across uh, Shanghai and, and, and Philippines and Germany, but all is managed through the freshest platform. So you know, as we wrap up, what we see here is that there are some real implications if you're looking to build a global business in SaaS, you know, in a space like um, you know, customer support where we have. If you want to build this global base, and especially if you want to tap into this incredible dynamism of emerging markets, inside sales model is, is one approach uh, that we have adopted, and we've been successful with that. You can certainly put boots on the ground, but for you to build this in a, ne in a lean manner, that's, that, that, that's a channel that uh, we would recommend, given our own experience. Secondly, you have to make sure, if you're in a remote setting, that you have ease of setup and onboarding um, uh, for your product. You don't have the luxury of hand-holding your customers. So your product has to work seamlessly. It has to be set up seamlessly. Third, we take a pretty liberal track on, on support. We believe that all customers deserve support um, and, and help they need uh, as they grow their business. So we actually help out. We, we, we provide free support for all our customers, including while they're in the trial phase. You know, because our conjecture is not only it's a good th ethos, it also um, makes sense for good business. If you are successful in your trial phase as a customer, chances are you're gonna convert and then you're gonna grow with you and with you, we will grow as a company. And finally, pricing model evolution. I wanna raise this point more as a, as a thought uh, um, a provocation than necessarily a policy change uh, for any of the SaaS companies today. But the reality is that as you saw that the emerging market businesses are consuming our products uh, with a, in, in a more data-intensive manner. Just like we've seen in the consumer world, there might be an opportunity even in the B2B world to think about pricing models differently where data is a factor. So with that, let me wrap up. Um, thank you for being a great audience. Do visit us uh, in, the, in the town square or check us out and, and sign up for our uh, free, free trials. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.